the current laws aren't working. I think it's something that should obviously be looked at. 40,000 pounds a year, keep one person in jail, open some weed, give me a break. Cannabis is very dangerous for the society. We don't know the full ins and outs of it yet. People in my lifetime that have used it quite regularly, I've seen it have quite negative effects on them. For the moment, I don't feel like it really is illegal. If you smoke, you don't go out and fight. People will always find a way to smoke weed. It's just pointless. Legalize it. The world has been deprived of one of the most valuable healing substances. It's just a social nice thing to do. It's disgusting. But I have used it in cakes. For many people, the idea that cannabis is still illegal is just plain crazy. It is the most widely used illegal drug in the world. Many millions use it every single day, and many more have admitted to using it at least once, including several politicians. In their youth. According to government-sponsored studies, it is less harmful to your health than alcohol or tobacco. The black market thing is really dodgy and a lot of people are making a lot of money that shouldn't be. By keeping it illegal, are we needlessly handing over many millions to the hands of criminals when it could be taxed by the government? Are we wasting police time and resources? Or are we being responsible and doing the right thing? We're still not sure what the effects on people could be. In preventing overuse and misuse of cannabis. Just don't do it worsening our drug problem. There's no sure way to tell, but one way that we can predict what might happen is by looking at places where the government has taken a different stance towards cannabis. One such place is here, Lambeth in South London. It is home to a quarter of a million people, and 10 years ago, it was the subject of a police experiment, the Lambeth Cannabis Warning Pilot Scheme. What it tells us is not black and white, rather it is several shades of grey. The imaginatively named Lambeth Cannabis Warning Pilot Scheme introduced a policy whereby people caught with small amounts of cannabis for their own use were no longer arrested. Instead, they were given a warning. The scheme began in 2001. At the time, an independent poll found that 83% of residents were in favour of the scheme and only 8% were opposed. After six months, the policy was extended to one year. At that point, media coverage turned. Newspapers such as The Guardian and The Telegraph reported that children as young as 10 were being found under the effects of cannabis. In 2002, the scheme was abolished. It remains an emotive issue. That's why we need someone unemotional and cool under pressure. We need an economist. At the Royal Economic Society annual conference, Professor Imran Razul of University College London is presenting a study of the effect of the scheme on crime. So to understand what impact the policy had on patterns of crime, we compare what happened to Lambeth before the policy, during the policy, and after the policy, to other parts of London. The study has crime records taken directly from the London Metropolitan Police for all 32 London boroughs for each month between April 1998 and January 2006. The first finding is that cannabis possession offences went up by around 20%, and that this effect lasts long after the policy ends. This is surprising because the policy was meant to arrest fewer people for cannabis possession. The study notices that cannabis possession offences went down in the neighbouring boroughs. This suggests that people were nipping into Lambeth to buy their cannabis, so-called drug tourists. These account for around half of the increase in cannabis possession offences, but it still means that people were buying more cannabis and there were more people buying cannabis for the first time. It would be just more young people using it. I lived down here in that time, and the street you see behind me was a drug supermarket. But the second finding relates to the policy's main aim. 
to improve policing in Lambeth. During the policy, overall crime fell by around 11% compared with the London average. Crime fell in areas such as violence, sexual offences, robbery, theft, fraud and criminal damage. These account for the vast majority of crimes in Lambeth. If you also include the increase in drugs related crime, overall total crime still falls by around about 8% in Lambeth. Remarkably, even though crime fell, by not having to focus on cannabis, the number of arrests went up by around 3% and the number of prosecutions also rose. If we think of these measures as being related to how effective the police are in being able to find individuals once an offence has been committed and actually being able to arrest them and to gather enough evidence to, to, to pass it on to the, the Crown Prosecution Service, this suggests there's an increase in police effectiveness for other types of crime. So, if the priority is to save police time and money and to make our streets safer, you have to say that the scheme was a huge success. It begs the question then of why the policy was abolished after only one year. No. Never. No. 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 Absolutely not. No, I don't think it should be legalised. Yes, it should be. There are clearly other factors at play that aren't being measured by the study. For many, these factors are political. But the study has one more finding that could tell us something about our attitudes towards cannabis. We all know the saying, judge people by their actions, not their words, and yet we often do the opposite. People might say that they are in favour of cannabis legalisation, but their actions might suggest otherwise. To capture this, the economists look at house prices in Lambeth. As we are told repeatedly, one of the key things in property is location, location, location. So, the price of a house in Lambeth should take into consideration the location of Lambeth, obviously. But this is a location where the policy towards cannabis is different from other parts of London. The study finds that during the policy, houses sold in Lambeth were around 6% lower in price than they otherwise would have been. Overall, the effects on house prices are such that people would prefer not to live in a neighbourhood which has been uh, where cannabis has been depenalised. That's despite the fact that total crime has fallen by between 8 and 11 percent, depending on how you want to measure it. So perhaps people are in favour of the scheme, but it's a case of not in my backyard. By just looking at the effects on crime, the study shows just how complex the issue of cannabis policy is. Perhaps surprisingly so. The current policy might still be crazy, but with all this uncertainty, perhaps it is less crazy than it first seems. If it was legal, then it could be regulated and... The government will tax it so they get their share of it. Which could be used for a beneficial so social purpose. And legalising it will give governments some control. The safety aspect, that sort of thing. You can then help people more if they have problems. It's much more sensible treat drugs through rehabilitation rather than criminal measures. If, if everything's done properly and moderated, I think, then definitely, I think, why not? The powers that be are not having a bit of it. Politicians don't want to look soft. That's politics, man. I really can't get into that. I don't know what's the reason for that. Stick in the mud. Too many people that control things are sticks in the mud. But I think people are scared of legalising it. The disadvantages and mantra ill effects of cannabis and that then adequately addressed in the public debate. We see increasingly more young people with mental health problems. Like my mum's a nurse and I've seen like what it what it can do to people. It's about how it's done, not that it's done. Yes. No. Yes. No. Yes. No. Yes. Yes and no. 